uh, the way that uh, tea haven started was uh, very very simple uh, I had gone through a bereavement in the family which was uh, very distressing and also was a very uh, old mate of mine in the army and uh, uh, getting over grief over it it was quite quite something we'd been uh, friends for donkey's years and I went out to Ibiza, I got a place out there and uh, I was sitting there by the side of the pool, feet up, with a glass of wine in my hand, as one does, and a friend was with me, and she was telling me about the fact that she had been a volunteer in the Martin House, a children's hospice up in Leeds. And uh, I'd probably have my mind elsewhere, and I said, oh, yes. She said, children's hospice, you? I said, yes. She said, well, there's only two in Great Britain, which there was at that, that time. I said, no, there are hundreds of them. No, she said, those are all adult, all adult hospice. And didn't say anything more about it. it. It hit me somewhere, and I don't know quite why, but it did. And I thought to myself, no matter what you get go through in the way of grief, and everybody has a grief in their lifetime, whether it's father, mother, brother, sister, husband, partner, friend, whatever, it cannot be as terrible as having a child and knowing that it's not going to live beyond its teenage years. The grief comes with that at the beginning, right at the beginning of a child's life, must be terrible. I thought, well, if that, if the statistics say that the children's hospices are needed in England to this extent, what about Wales? And with the deprivation that Wales has had to go through over the centuries, I thought it could be even worse. So when I came back, I started, I thought about it, and then it just, it just nailed me. And I went searching, then I went to the feasibility study, uh, went to the Welsh office to get uh, statistics out of, out of the hospitals, I tried the local authorities, health authorities, etc. Wanted to see whether a children's hospice was being thought of, had been built. Um, and they all wrote back to me and said, nope, nothing in our area, good luck. And I had to take a deep breath and that was it. And I'd found several families down here in South Wales that were in a position of actually that would be, would be able to use a children's hospice and it wasn't built. And they were featured in the South Wales Echo. And from there, it ballooned. I mean, the South Wales people took us to their hearts and, and it was where we stayed. And it's a, it's a huge area. I think that we have not really touched the tip of the iceberg. I am sure that there are many, many poor people up there who have still not realized what we have to give. I think the staff are wonderful. I, I can't... Uh, I, I love every one of them. And uh, they, uh, they are such uh, great characters and, and oh, so, so compassionate. And also so skilled. I don't know a better, bigger, better people than the, than the South Walians. They're all heart when it comes to something like this. They, they really give. It's what it can give to the families that makes tea happen. It's hope. It's cherishing. It's comfort. It's support. It is expertise. It is very human. It is completely wholehearted and warm-hearted. It is just a haven, and that's why I called it Tea Haven.